What's up, YouTube? Robert bringing you some more Life is Strange Before the Storm. This is episode one, part two. Each episode, as of right now, is going to be broken up into two parts. If you were, haven't checked out part one of this episode, it was last Saturday's video. I will put that in the info cards up above. So we're picking things off where we left off. We're picking things up where we left off last time. We are following Rachel apparently onto this train car for whatever reason. It's not Fallout. That'd be bad. All right, Rachel helps us up. Yeah, where is this train going north? somewhere I don't know she doesn't even know where this is going we're just kind of here I guess and we cut or I cut out the audio from this part because there's music playing in the background and again like what happened a few times in the first life is strange is the music in the background tends to be copyright stuff so we're just trying to avoid it this time around so whenever there is music playing in the Anyone background we cut the audio out and that's when I'm gonna chime in with my thoughts of the episode and stuff up to that point so let's push this crate over not kick it off the train car so we can have a seat and talk to Rachel so they're going to dialogue here in a second so I'm going to cut out and right, chime back in here shortly Rachel freaking Amber play it cool I is this nervousness is that what this feeling is Wish Max were here, so I could ask. Should I make small talk? Is that what people do? It's nice Rachel we're having. <laughs> what? I mean, weather. It's nice weather. It sure is. So... It's kind of weird that we're hanging out. You mean because I don't hang out with anyone and I don't have any friends? You have friends. Well, I used to. Friend. Singular. Her name was Max, but she left for greener, more northern pastures. That sucks. I didn't mention it earlier, but... You seem to have some kind of Jedi mind powers over Mr. Keaton and the theater crew. You mean when we were talking about true love in the play? <laughs> I guess you could say I'm good with people, yeah. Just don't pull that stuff with me. You will get on this train. Oh, <laughs> shit. I bet you're wondering what we're doing. The thought occurred, yeah. Well... I wanted some company. That's it? That's it. Try again. I'm going to need more to go on than that. Joy rides with me aren't fun? Joy rides to where again? Life needs a little mystery, Chloe. Let's do something fun. Okay, I'm listening. Two truths and a lie. What? I think we should play Two Truths and a Lie. It's a game where each person offers up three facts about themselves, two of which are the truth, and one of which is a lie. Right. And then the other person has to guess which is which. Sounds fun. You're on. I'll start. First, I'm ambidextrous. Second, I was born in New York, the land of fashion and Broadway, to which I will one day return when my heinous exile here in Arcadia Bay comes to an end. New York, huh? I've never been. Not a world traveler? Not yet, at least. If you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Russia, Greece, Kathmandu? Kathmandu. One day, I'm going to climb Everest. And I thought moving away from Arcadia Bay was ambitious. What's your third thing? My third thing? Two truths and a lie. You say three things. Right. 
I'm a Leo. Meow. Okay, <laughs> so ambidextrous, born in New York, and a Leo. Gotcha. So, which is the lie? You seem more like a Cali girl to me. Damn, Price, not bad. Long Beach, in fact. West Coast is the best coast. I've only ever lived in Oregon, so nothing to compare it to, I guess. Then we'll have to change that one day, won't we? Okay, your turn, Price. First fact, right. Something about myself. Should I start things off with a lie or with the truth? Or should I cheat? Let's see how good she really is at this game. I used to love country music when I was a kid. Now it makes me want to throw up. Literally. That's... weird. I'm secretly the lead guitarist of an all-girl Misfits cover band called the Misfits. Impressive. I used to want to be a pirate when I grow up. I kind of still do. Arr. You're hella mysterious, Chloe Price. Uh, hella? <laughs> Who says that? It's a Cali thing. Anyway, I think I have your number. I'm not sure why country music makes you throw up. I'm a complex girl, Rachel. I think it's probably true. Also, I kinda like the Dixie Chicks. You and David both. No accounting for taste. Who's David? He's... Ah, uh, the guy my mom's seeing, I guess. Oh, and you don't like him. <laughs> it's still so weird that she's dating someone. My dad and my mom, they were totally in love. You can tell how fucked up she is now just by how she's settling for David. He's this total hard-ass ex-military jagoff type, like the opposite of my dad. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, David has no respect. He acts like I'm some kind of problem to solve. Sometimes I am a problem, though. That's a load of bullshit. What do you mean? You're not a problem, Chloe. You're a person. It sounds like the only problem is David. You need to hit him where it hurts. <laughs> The only thing that David loves has four wheels and a four-barrel carburetor. Oh, God. A muscle car? I'm probably going to steal it soon, so... Let me know if you need an accomplice. Of course you wanted to be a pirate. Sail the open seas. Buckle swash. Plunder secret treasure. So, pirate. Obviously true. Maybe you'd like to be my first mate. Oh, are you accepting applications? Considering it. So, let's talk about this lead guitarist business. The business of show. As much as I'd love to be a groovy to your all-girl cover band, The Misfits. I'm gonna have to call Lie on that one. You don't think I can rock? On the contrary, you absolutely rock. The problem is, your hand is smooth, no calluses. You don't play guitar. Pity too, you'd look hot on stage. So, if my math is correct, you told me two truths and one lie. What, you expected me to cheat? Winners make their own rules, Chloe. 
You are crazy good at this game. A lifetime of studying the human condition. Well, I'm impressed. I bet it's hard to impress Chloe Price. I'm gonna feel good about that one. When your dad is the district attorney, I guess lying is something you're used to. Seriously? Seriously. I know who to call if I need to get out of a ticket then. Not that I have a right of my own. Car first, embarrassing number of moving violations second. Hey, thanks for trusting me. Trusting you? You played the game. And not everyone would admit to wanting to be a pirate. But eye patches are so cool. And rum is delicious. Also, you told me about that dickwad David. Now he's on my shit list too. Hell yeah. Mustache brain won't know what hit him. I guess. You opened up a lot, that's all. It's not a big deal. I hate to break it to you, but Chloe Price is not exactly renowned throughout Arcadia Bay as a bastion of trust and empathy. I'm just not really into touchy-feely shit. But I feel like I can trust you. Yeah? I got on this train with you, didn't I? Fair point. Wouldn't mind listening to some music. Hey, want to listen? bracelet. I've had it, I guess, since I was a kid in Long Beach. It reminds me that there's more to experience out there than just Arcadia Bay. Maybe one day I'll go back to Long Beach. Or anywhere but here. Maybe sooner than later. Me too. Arcadia Bay can suck a bag of dicks. Sometimes I feel like I've got no reason to stay. Don't be surprised, Chloe, if one day I'm just out of here. Let me know if you need an accomplice. Check it out! We're here! What? Where is here? Jump and find out! Did you say jump? Jump! Fuck it! Reward for making it up here? I have a new game for us to play. Another one? I like games. Deal with it. This is what I learned in theater class. It's all about improvisation. So far, what I've learned about you is that you're into acting, lying, and playing games. What's your point? That you're either full of imagination or full of shit. Hmm. Let me know when you figure out which one. This game involves spying on people from afar. Luckily, we got some high-tech surveillance equipment right here. Let's fire it up. That blows. Well, shit. That was my last quarter. You? Quarterless. Damn. 
Hey, maybe I can MacGyver something up. I've been told I'm pretty handy. Oh, yeah? Let's see what you got. Rachel really wants to use this viewfinder. I'd love to get it working for her. Totally gonna get you that quarter. Love the confidence. Would love a quarter even more. Totally gonna get you that quarter. Love the confidence. Would love a quarter even more. Dwight Mueller really killed it with this statue of an explorer guy. Where are all my explorer ladies at, though? Probably at... Get out of here, woodland creatures. Have some self-respect. I've always said the Prescott family has a couple screws loose. This trash can is in pretty high demand. If Max were here, she'd probably take a black and white photograph and call it Innocence Lost, or some shit. This Blackwall guy sure liked founding stuff that was already there. Founders keepers, I guess. Dwight Mueller really killed it with this statue of an explorer guy. Where are all my explorer ladies at, though? Probably at home, washing laundry and spitting out kids. Fuck you, Dwight. Huh. Looks like I might be able to pry it open with the right tool. Uh, I'm thinking about prying open that viewfinder. Got a knife on you? A knife? Yeah. My mom took mine. Uh, no. How about a nail file? I guess you could stab someone with a nail file. Oh, right. Sh sure, let's try it. Dwight Mueller really killed it with this statue of an explorer guy. Where are all my explorer ladies at, though? Probably at home, washing laundry and spitting out kids. Fuck you, Dwight. Stealing a dedication plate takes... Persistence. <laughs> Press got power, activate.
I win. That was enough of a game for me. Your MacGyver skills are second to none. Except, probably, MacGyver. Rachel smells like... Jasmine? Is she smelling me right now, too? Really should have showered this morning. All right, here's the game. You find some people for us to spy on, and then you and I will act out what they're saying and thinking. That's it? I do that in my head during, like, every class. See? You're a natural. Let's give it a try. Hey, what do you say we barbecue some squirrels when we're done here? God, you just have the best ideas. Loving this guy. What's he thinking right now? No matter how fast I go, I'll never outwalk this wedgie. That's so tragic, but also beautiful in its own way. <laughs> Sweet beanie. What do you suppose she's thinking? Nature's Wi-Fi sucks. Maybe there's a squirrel family around here with broadband. If only I can guess their password. We love nuts, 69. Dingoes ate our babies, 13. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with these two? And the Lord saideth, Thou shalt make a burnt offering of your firstborn son. Who are you talking to, Dad? No one, son. Now, lean into the grill and see if the fire started. Further. <laughs> Further. Wow. That was dark. Too dark? Perfect dark. This is fun. Who's next? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to hog the viewfinder. Ooh, <laughs> jackpot. Commence makeout session in three, two, one. Nailed it. Damn, they are really going at it. Oh, honey, I think we used the vibrating bed for too long. I'm totally seeing double. <laughs> Rachel? Hey, are you all right? What are we doing? Excuse me? Last I checked, you're supposed to be Chloe Price. Yet we've been ditching now for hours, and we haven't even gotten wasted yet. That's got to be against some school ditching rule. Uh, hell yeah. The honor student wants to show the school delinquent how to party? Be my guest. How gracious of you. They have a bottle of wine. Let's steal it. Uh, okay. 
Or we could go try to find a liquor store instead. No. You shouldn't bring alcohol to a public park if you're not willing to share it with everybody, right? And fuck it. I just want to take something that's not mine. All right. I'm going in. Try to keep up. Um, can we help you? <sighs> oh my god! Holy shit! Talk about committing to a performance. Better act fast. What, what do we do? Should we... Thank God. Please, this girl is in trouble. Go get help. I need to get these two to focus on Rachel so I can swipe the wine. What are you waiting for? Go! I, I, I already called 911. They, they should have an ambulance here any moment. In the meantime, they said to keep close watch on her. Like, turn all the way around and really focus. Watch out. I'm going to check her pulse. That's on her neck, right? I still think you should go get help. There's a ranger station on the other side of the park. Good point. We'll keep watch while you go. Uh, uh, look at all the time we've wasted already. This woman needs mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Stat. Uh, no. Yep. Definitely needs mouth to mouth. Okay, okay. You can do this. I can't do it. Pathetic. Look, he's clearly useless. This woman needs help from someone who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Now I'm starting to feel sick too. I think it's contagious. You'd better run away before it gets you too. Hold on. There's something off about this. Are you girls putting us on? Rachel! Run! What the hell? So, maybe your acting could use a little work, but at least you committed to the performance. Thanks. <laughs> I could use a drink after trying to keep up with you. I am excessively sober right now. Right. Okay. Guess we're leaving now. It's been acting kind of standoffish ever since we left the park. What's her deal? I've heard that actors are moody, but... Wow, Rachel. I'm not moody. I just need some space. Is that all right with you? Okay. Actually, no. I thought we were having a great day together. Why are you acting like this all of a sudden? I'm not acting like anything. I just want to be left alone right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I know I'm not the easiest person to be around. I don't exactly have tons of experience with the whole friendship thing. Not everything revolves around you, Chloe. I didn't say it did. I'm just saying I understand. No, you really don't. Fuck! <laughs> uh... Okay, I still have no idea what's going on with Rachel, but... Apparently, she gets smashy when she's angry. I can work with that. Score.
Here, if you really want to smash something, this should do the trick. I asked you to leave me alone. Are you kidding me? I, I know you're the school princess and all, with the DA daddy and the perfect grades and all the perfect little Victoria chases kissing your perfect ass, but seriously, fuck you. Great, I'm leaving. See you around, Chloe. You can't leave! Watch me. Rachel, wait! Don't go! Why not? Because... Because I don't want to ruin this the way I ruin everything else in my life. And what is this, exactly? I mean... Fuck. Are you actually going to make me say it? Say what, exactly? You know, like... A friendship. But more. Ah. I know. Weird, right? It's just, today was the best day I've had since, since my dad died. And when I almost ruined it just now, the way I ruin everything, it made me realize whatever's going on between us is special. Come on, say something. Chloe, I, I, you know what? Forget it. This was really stupid. I mean, you're Rachel Amber and I'm Chloe Price. It's not that. It's just hard right now. And I can't talk about it. Why not? Because I can't. I know it isn't fair, but it's how it is. Goodbye, Chloe. Fuck this place. You know she's fake, y you can't take your eyes off her. Who else do I know who fits that description? Yeah! Fuck off, Rachel. never understood your hard on for cameras, Max. You took a million pictures of us, and not one of them showed that you were gonna leave when I needed you most. Fuck cameras. If you want to rip a family apart from the inside, it's important to bring the proper tools. Fuck you, David. So since the park, Rachel's been acting weird, I think Chloe might have just 
said that in a little line a little, little bit ago, but now Chloe's just having a mental breakdown. She's what does she say? She drops the bat. Just mid mental breakdown. Now uh, is she having one of those? Oh. Okay, that makes sense. That is the exact car that William, her father, was driving. That when he got into the accident, that's just not making her situation any better. At this moment, the weird stuff that, or weird things with Rachel that were just happening moments ago, and now seeing the car that her father basically died in if we keep every time there's a chloe dream sequence thing it's always in a car and william's there and they get hit by a train and all that stuff but if you guys remember again it was last year when we played the first life is strange we were of course we were playing as max and we went back and basically hid william's keys so he wouldn't get in the car and then end up in the accident and end up dying so we saw what happened in the alternate universe I guess so to speak what would happen if he didn't get in the accident Chloe would be the one to get in an accident and become paralyzed she would ask Max to put her out of her misery when they were having a little bit of a moment we get to smush the smash the hood of the car apparently that's cool but um yeah so we know if William doesn't die and get in the accident then Chloe's the one that kind of ends up in that position as well. So we ended up going back and, I guess, using air quotes as I say this, we're fixing, we fixed that situation. So we know, unfortunately for Chloe, that William dying is pretty much the better of the two options. So she's going to have, yeah, another mental breakdown on top of the one that she was having before about Rachel, but... It looks like she's just gonna sleep there for a second and then yep dream sequence as I expected why are you crying sweetheart and of course they're in the car okay random crow that was weird and trippy because you're not real <laughs> I'm not what is going uh, that's on that's even weirder when he talks like What's responds past like that is Prologue There's a poster shit. for the Tempest. Get I have to play that. Look on the um, bright side, Rachel you? was. What bright side? Going to be part of. You made a new friend today. And then we cut out the audio for this because there's music playing in the background. Hope you guys don't really mind. The captions are on the screen for what characters are saying. But again, trying to avoid copyright with this series. So let's see what else is in the car that we can look at. I guess Mannequin I did head. that. That's not weird at all, but that was the one that we hit before with the Gotta bat. Say, that was some fight. A lover's quarrel, you might say? <laughs> she nearly took your head off. Oh, and making a nearly took your head off pun with the beheaded mannequin. There's Rachel staring at a tree. The little like dream what sequences slash delusions Sorry, keep getting sweetheart. weirder and weirder, but they I'm keep ending the same way. Business. Uh, wine bottle. I don't feel drunk. No, she's not drunk. She's just kind of having a mental Sometimes breakdown. Sometimes people need you, though. There's Rachel again. Even when they don't admit it. Is she gonna get in? Or she could just... Okay. Again, these are getting weirder and weirder now. She's just bursting into flames. Okay, life is strange. Could always make things very, very strange. Rachel. And train. Alright. So, again, those little dream sequences end this exact same way. Chloe just woke up. She's laying in the car, even though that's not where she fell asleep. But again, she's probably beyond upset at this point. Let's see what we got to do now. Again, well, like we said before, once once well, once dialogue starts to pick up again, we're gonna cut 
out with the commentary and then pop back in at the end of the episode but before that happens if there's any part of this episode or any character specifically that you guys like definitely drop it like on this video comment your thoughts on episode one so far or just episode one as a whole part one and part two let me know thoughts and opinions on that in the comment section down below and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe turn on post notifications so you know when i upload because you know youtube algorithm likes to be weird and not notify people of their subscriptions and stuff there's that crow again all right so i guess we're heading this way You came. I'm glad. Hey. I couldn't let the day end with whatever this afternoon was. Chloe, I want to talk to you about something, but I don't know how to talk about this. You don't have to tell me anything you don't want to. You remember that guy that we saw under this tree with that woman? The ones who were making out? That was my dad. Oh. All right. And that woman was definitely not my mom. Oh. The worst part is... <laughs> I'm not surprised. I felt like my dad's been lying about something for a while. I just, I didn't know what it was. So when I saw he got a text from an unknown number asking him to meet, I thought, I thought I could catch him or something. I'm so sorry, Rachel. I don't, I don't know what to say. Neither do I, Chloe. I love my dad. I love him. And I never want to see his fucking face again. When my dad died, I was so mad at him. For months, I felt wrong because half the time I thought of him, I wanted to scream. And the other half, I forgot. Forgot that anything had changed. It's silly, but I've carried this photo around with me for years. It's from Mount Hood. My dad took me hiking there when I was 10 and it started raining and I fell and broke my arm three miles from the car. I remember screaming like I was gonna die, but my dad, he carried me down the mountain. I still remember the smell of his coat and how calm he was and the sound of his voice and... He was just so strong, you know? I, I felt safe. You trusted him. Completely. Here. Chloe, I owe you an apology. Don't... Don't worry about it. No, I mean it. Whatever's going on between us, it's... intense and new and awesome and... You had the courage to tell me that you feel it too. And I treated you like shit. Courage? I don't know if I'd call it that. More like 
blind desperation. And maybe a slight buzz from that wine. I just want you to know... I'm lucky that you were with me today. You're a badass, Chloe Price. What? Remember that biker asshole who wouldn't let you into the mill? You talked your way right past him. You saw that? And those skeevy douchebags who followed you upstairs? You dropped that one guy with a knee to the balls. Only because you showed up at the last minute and... What about Drew? When he was picking on Nathan? You got right in his face and called him out. That was pretty sweet, actually. See? You're the real thing, Chloe. I don't know anyone like you. Plus, you came along with me, no questions asked. Well, I don't really need a good reason to ditch school. I guess tomorrow there'll be hell to pay. My mom might skip grounding and just go straight to the death penalty. And my dad will definitely punish me with... I'm so sorry, Rachel. Fuck him. What I wouldn't give to leave this place and never look back. What's stopping us? Us? Are you serious? There's nothing keeping me here. Not anymore. So, if I came to you tomorrow and told you to pack your bags... I'm serious. Let's do it, Chloe. Let's leave this place forever. Okay. Okay, so this story just took a unexpected turn. I just found out that the guy in the park that we saw kissing that woman, it was Rachel's father, but that was not her mother. So that's a little weird situation. You could see why she's upset now. It makes total sense. She just showed us a picture of them when she was younger, and it looks like she's going to light it on fire. I don't blame her for that at all. Alright, let's not light the forest on fire. Okay, things are starting to make more sense. Come on, Rachel, it's okay. Or not. I just said don't start a fire, and she's screaming. But there's music playing in the background, but she's obviously yelling. There any a forest fire. Okay. We should definitely now get out of here. Right, that's definitely going to cause some issues. It's like Rachel has some superpowers or something. But I think this is almost the end of episode one. Ending on a bit of an emotional and sad note as Life is Strange tends to be good at. So we just pretty much lit this forest on fire. There's Frank, there's, oh, what's his name? The other, other drug dealer guy. Forgetting his name, but Frank sees the fire. I guess all the other characters that we've met in this episode so far are going to end up seeing fire. There's um, Chloe's mom and... Like she le likes to say, step douche, David. There's Nathan Prescott still looking at the um, yearbook or whatever he made. There's Drew, Mikey, and I believe the girl's name is Stephanie. They're also seeing the fire. 
We met uh, as Principal Wells with some cops. We met them in uh, part one. I think that's, yep, that's Rachel's father. So he sees the fire. He's immediately going to start freaking out, I guess. And there's that mysterious woman, I guess his mistress or whoever. She's also in the forest. Really close by, which is a little creepy if you ask me. Alright, so that is the end of episode one. It's definitely a great uh, basis for the rest of the following episodes, storyline-wise. There's the credits. I think we get to skip them, and those are our choices from the episode. We attacked, we were kind to Joyce, defended Nathan, and told Rachel. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff, and we'll see everybody next time.